Hi, welcome back to Advanced Software Engineering. Today we're going to talk about risk management. You may have come across one of the following situations. You've been working on your product with a small agile team. You have four developers. You've been going around the clock. Your customer comes back every week and checks in with you, looks at the latest sprint, looks at the product in progress. And then this morning he walks into the door and says, guys, we're going to change everything from scratch because I just got the newest marketing study and, and they say we're totally going to fail on the target audience unless we also cater to this specific thing. Market change. Or another one. You're following a more iterative development approach, a slightly more traditional one because you're working for a big automotive company. They gave you this giant big requirement specification that you have to implement. You've been working with your 20 people team for two to three months and uh, you finally get to a really critical part of server performance and you can just not seem to be able to push towards the test benchmark that you need to get to. So there is an underlying technology risk. The server that you chose, the platform that you chose, is just not performant enough. And there was no way for you to find out earlier because you didn't have the right measures at hand. What do those two scenarios have in common? Both of them are about a specific risk. The first one about a business risk and the second one about a technology risk. And we can deal with them or try to anticipate them with risk management. Now what that means is, despite the fact that we plan however well we can, we will eventually run into things going wrong. And that could be on the side of your client, maybe they underestimated something or maybe they were on the wrong path, um, or it could be on your development side. Maybe some of your developers are just not as quick in picking up the new technology stack as you thought they would be. Maybe uh, two of your best developers got carried away by a different company and now they work for somebody else and took all of the team knowledge with them. Maybe it's just something in the underlying technology stack that doesn't work quite as it should. Now the question is, um, how do we get to a reasonable idea of how we can deal with risk management before we are 55 years old and have 35 years experience of software development on our backs? That's what we can use a couple of generic steps for. The first one is risk identification. And as I said, there are two main types of risks, business risks and technology risks. That means you look into both types of those risks and you will find reference lists for what the usual ones are. Something about the market performance for a business risk or a supplier not being available anymore something on the higher level that does not have to do with the implementation or the technology of your system. So let's just put higher level in parenthesis behind that. The technology risks are the ones more associated with the specific implementation that you're trying to accomplish. It could be some technology that you rely on. It could be another software system that your software system is supposed to talk to and for some reason it doesn't work quite as it should or it could be because you have difficulty implementing, say, a fast enough algorithm or a scalable enough algorithm, whatever this may be. So this is lower level, if we talk in terms of abstraction. For each of those risks, you want to perform an analysis that says, how likely is this going to occur for risk?
And if it does happen, how bad is it going to be? Now, based on this analysis, you can then come up with a table. So here you're going to have your risk of lists, uh, your list of risks, and then here you have your likelihood, and here you have the how bad is it in terms of impact, and then you can find some color code coding or however you want to rate it. If it's likely and the impact is grave, that's bad. That's the ones that you want a really good mitigation strategy for. So you've identified them, you have analyzed them. Now you're going to find a mitigation strategy. And that means two things. First one is how to avoid it from happening in the first place, how to prevent it from happening in the first place. And the second one is how to mitigate in case it does happen. And then finally, how are you going to control and monitor over time to see as early as you possibly can if something looks like one of your risks is going to happen. So monitor, check indicators. That would lead to one of these risks coming up. So that means we should probably add a third element up here that are the indicators that would help us detect when is this probably going to happen. And that's what you just keep doing. So we go through kind of an iterative process here. You can take those four steps and put them into a circular process. So we go from identification of risks to analysis to mitigation. to monitoring. And with every new development phase, let's say you go in iterations, you want to start here again. Say new requirements come in, new iteration, then you want to restart this loop of your risk management as well. So two things to keep in mind. First, circular process of these four phases. And second one, you want to have one good overview table of all your risks for your specific project, how likely they're going to occur, how bad it is going to be if they happen, and what indicators you could use to see early on whether something is going to happen.